Hi everyone, my co-host Rudi and I were back again to talk to you about Campi Flegri, a potential super volcano. And guys, it's rumbling in Italy, Stromboli is erupting, Etna is erupting, and many of you thought, well, will this have an impact on the activity of Campi Flegri that is threatening Naples, a city of more than three million people? And as it seems, it doesn't ease the pain at Campi Flegri. There was another earthquake swarm with the largest one magnitude too. So I don't think it is connected. They might be connected with the deeper magma reservoir, but that shallow magma chamber that has been confirmed in a recent study underneath the Solfatara, underneath Campi Flegri at a depth of only four to five kilometers, that's not connected to Stromboli or Etna. So two volcanoes are erupting and two are acting up because the number of earthquakes and the magnitude of earthquakes Earthquakes at the big guy Vesuvius has also increased and is at a level that is considered to be above normal. So Naples is sandwiched basically between two bad volcanoes, so to speak, Vesuvius and Campi Flegre. Rudy, and what do you say? He's listening because there were just coyotes outside that were really making a lot of noise. And he was, of course, thinking, okay, no, he's not. I just wanted to say, Rudy, that you were excited about that, but now you're yawning. So, okay. Um, Vesuvius, of course, um, is like the excellent tourist introduction to how a volcano should look with the crater and like a high mountain and everything. But Campi Flegre, it's looking nothing like that. If you don't know it, you wouldn't even think that there is a volcano. So as it always is, the dangers in the hidden one and not in the obvious one. And Campi Flegre might be looking for an opportunity to erupt unseen, although in full sight. The most recent eruption of Campi Flegre was in 1538, and uh, it didn't start on land, guys. It did start offshore in the water, and then it was basically migrating to the land, and it produced a new mount that's now called Monte Nuovo, that's the new mountain basically. And also this eruption did do a lot of damage to the area. So it, that's 1538, for, don't forget about this, right? It wiped out an old harbor and it caused half the population of Naples to flee. This eruption was the first one in 3,000 years, and that eruption was relatively small. And it was preceded by months or years or maybe even decades of earthquake swarms. But we know if a volcano is about to erupt, most likely Campi Flegri will show a sudden and fast uplift maybe several meters in a very short period of time. It was showing something like this in the 1980s, where it was showing a ground uplift, including a seismic swarm of several meters, but then it didn't erupt. So we're assuming that it was a magma intrusion. Magma was on the way, rising up, but didn't make it to the surface. And since then, the crust has become more brittle, has only a third of its stability, so that makes it more likely that magma could creep up to the surface. And like always, as it's so hot right now with summer, uh, Rudy's heating me up so much. I think I'll put him down and do the rest of the video, and then we'll be back for the outro, so to speak. Let's have a look at the current list of earthquakes. So today there was another 1.0 at the Flegrian fields and then in the evening yesterday 1.1 Campi Flegri and then two hours prior to that the magnitude 2.0 and then 1.2 and then the day before 1.7. So basically that was Vesuvius 1.7 on Jules. July 6th, and then another one 
2.3 Vesuvius. And then in between, of course, Phlegrian Fields, 1.1, 1.0, Vesuvius, 1.0, 1.0. And you know, it goes back to the last swarm that I already reported about on July 3rd with the magnitude 3.2 at the Phlegrian Fields. But if you look at this list, it's a lot, it's almost constantly that we see these earthquake swarms and they're not only micro seismic, so they are showing earthquakes above one, above two and above three as well, right? 3.2 before that, we had another 3.7, then we had the big one, 4.4 and they have just recently discovered a new fault line that probably was created when there was another big earthquake last year, a magnitude 4.2. So they think because of how this fault is situated, that this might be the reason why the scientists are saying you could expect an earthquake in this area with magnitude five or even higher. So that's what they're warning about. So you see the list here, it's continuously going on while we have on Sicily, we have Etna going on and we have Stromboli going on. Check out my latest Stromboli video because they're saying Stromboli is out of the ordinary right now. It's always been normal that it shows the activities but this is more than usual that's why they were worried that something bigger might happen so that's not really great we've got Vesuvius talking to us it's rumbling sending us some warning signs Campi Flegre for sure is the one that we should look at way more and be way more worried about at the moment definitely we can say turbulent times in southern Italy and the earthquake swarm that was just the recent one that I just told you and mentioned, it was over 30 single earthquakes. So I've only shown you the ones that were over magnitude one. And uh, the epicenter was along the coast, southeastern of the Solfatara. And also we have seen more earthquakes again in the Gulf of Pozzuoli, in the water um, at the coast of Bagnoli. And also there we have seen just recently several earthquakes that were showing a magnitude above two. So already over the past few years since 2005, this period of being restless and increasing bradycism has started. And what are the most observed signs of that? That's of course the bradycism. Then we found that the magma chamber is at a shallow depth of only four to five kilometers and not deeper as they originally thought. So magma doesn't have that much way to go to reach the surface. Plus the cap rock layer is more brittle. And that's why over the years they have installed more and more monitoring systems and monitoring stations at Campi Flegri in the caldera areas and in the sea. Solfatara, that's this one crater that also has the steam vents coming out, the fumaroles, is definitely more active and scientists are saying it's creeping towards an eruption. The earthquakes have become more frequent, the land keeps rising at an accelerated rate, and the sea is falling because of that, right? So interesting things are happening. So have a look at that map here behind. This is basically a map of Campi Flegre with all these different volcanic features, these craters of old eruptions in this region. All this was formed after the last major explosion that happened a very, very long time ago. And then you see there on the western side of that map, you see the 1538 eruption that created Monte Nuovo. That's the number nine here on that list. The earthquake activity, let's have a look at these graphs so that you really have something that you can visualize what has been happening, how drastically has it changed since it became active again in 2005. So initially in 2005, the earthquake activity was minor and shallow at a depth of two kilometers or less. And then since 2012, it has become more intense. And since 2020, if you look at these charts, it has really taken off. So 
all these graphs, they're coming from the monthly bulletins that the INGV, the Italian Institute for Geophysics and Volcanology, they're sitting right there in the greater Naples area. They're watching all the volcanoes. They're releasing these weekly and monthly bulletins to give us information about what is going on. So these pictures they are up until april this year so keep in mind since then it's really gotten worse we had the may 20th earthquake swarm with the big one 4.4 and since then several larger earthquake swarms 3.7 just 3.2 recently so this looks already bad but add two and a half more months of intense activity to that that makes it look even more intense but despite the fact that we don't have the big ones in there yet, it shows still, it shows the rapid increase in number and also the large increase in energy since 2023. And the depth of these earthquakes basically remained the same initially at a depth of around two kilometers, but also more recently has occurred at a depth of four kilometers. And we know what is at four kilometers that was confirmed in a study, the shallow magma chamber from where the magma is trying to reach the surface. And when that was happening, that they didn't release this immediately, so the officials kept that kind of quiet, but then it leaked somehow, and the mayors of Pacioli, of Pozzoli, they got wind of it, so they were not even informed how shallow this magma chamber actually is, and they were angry. They said, guys, you have to tell us this, right? But as we know now, if you've seen my previous videos, they're worried about real estate prices crashing, less tourists coming, if they release all that or if they increase the alert level. The alert level is still yellow at Campi Flegre, not orange. So they're saying this is the reason. And the Minister of Civil Defense, Muzomechi, he calls them out repeatedly. He says it's criminal that even so many people are living right on this volcano and he says politicians were sleeping for decades allowing construction there's so much illegal construction in this area which was then later on just sanctioned and said well yeah you can leave it there keep living there keep it right so that's a big problem as well underneath this sulfatara area especially we have a hydro thermal system that also extends like two to three kilometers below the surface and of course is creating extra heat. That's why we have a lot of these hot steam fumaroles and bubbling mud pools that are releasing sulfur gases into the area and the residents have also reported that in in recent weeks and months more and more they can smell sulfur and they have also noticed that more, the scientists the ingv guys are coming there to test now on a regular base on a daily base which they didn't do just a few months ago so they also know something's rumbling and something's coming and a reason why we have we have a feeling that somehow someone or some authorities are keeping a lid on this thing. They don't want too much information out. They're always talking about, yeah, yeah, we need to prepare evacuation plans for Brady seismic event, for seismic events and stuff like this, but they're not really saying for a volcanic eruption. They only like scratching the surface of that. They're saying the earthquakes are the problem. But you know, why do we have these earthquakes? Because there's a volcano that wants to come out. That's what's creating these earthquakes, right? It's not that they come from nothing. These are volcanic activities that are going on there and less subduction zones or something like this. There are fault lines underneath Italy, but this is volcanic activity that we're dealing with here, this Brady seismic activity. And there might be an explanation why the scientists are so careful. But, you know, we have to say some of them have spoken out in recent months. Um, Roberto Scandone, who has been 
very, very active over decades at the INGV, the Vesuvius Observatory, and still works there, has released multiple papers about Campi Flegre. He said in March, if I had the resources, I would evacuate. And there's others that said we might be creeping towards an eruption. You have to prepare for the worst case scenario. Your evacuation plans are not working. If you don't come up with better ones, hundreds of thousands of people will die. So they are speaking out, but many of them might take it on a careful level because there's something that happened in the past in Italy to volcanologists and seismologists, scientists that did give warnings. So I think since then scientists are more careful with what they say, with their predictions or with what they think is happening because there was this case in 2012, 2011, it was a landmark legal case. There were six Italian scientists and government officials that were convicted of manslaughter back in 2012 for their roles in failing to predict a deadly earthquake that struck the town of L'Aquila in 2009. There was a 6.3 magnitude earthquake that did result in the death of 309 people and left tens of thousands of people homeless and also caused widespread destruction. So what happened? What's the background of the story? So in 2009, in April 2009, um, the town of Aquila, that's a medieval town in central Italy, so not southern Italy, it was hit by a powerful earthquakes. And in the months that were leading up to the quake, the region had experienced numerous smaller tremors, which had raised concerns among the local population. The defendants were members of the National Commission for the Forecast and Prevention of Major Risks. They held a meeting in L'Aquila on March 31, 2009 to assess the risk of a major earthquake that might be in the works. So what are the charges? The prosecution argued that the scientists and the officials had provided incomplete imprecise and contradictory information. So contradictory information. Why am I telling you this? Because the problem is there the scientists didn't warn enough, but let's say scientists here at Campi Flegre say, evacuate, it's coming, it's coming. And then millions of people in Naples are leaving in panic. Many will die or be hurt just by trying to get out of the city. It'll be total chaos. So scientists are taking the risk that they might be prosecuted for that. So back in 2012, they're saying they did provide incomplete, imprecise and contradictory information. So that if you transport this to the current situation at Campi Flegri, that could be a similar case, right? They could say, well, you triggered an emergency evacuation, but your information was incom incomplete, imprecise, and contradictory, because it will always be like that when it comes to earthquakes and volcanoes, because the science is not that far progressed. You cannot make precise prediction, not even close. You can only make assumptions and think that something is going to happen, but then you also have the scientists, they say, we know that we don't know. We know more about the surface of the moon than we know what's going on in the inner core of our earth. So that's why it sounds a little bit unfair what has been done to these people. But what are the results of lawsuits like this? People are more careful with what they're saying. So they were accused of giving a falsely optimistic assessment that led many residents to remain in their homes where they perished in the subsequent quake. So transfer this. They were giving falsely pessimistic assessment and people saying Campi Flegri is going to erupt, for example, triggering millions of people to be in panic, try to run out and die, although there will not be an eruption. I'm just making this case up, but 
I guess you, you know where I'm coming from, right? If you're a scientist, you know that case and you're careful with your predictions. But Roberto Scandone, he's an older guy, he sees it and he said, if I had the resources, I would evacuate. So he did not say, hey, civil defense, you have the resources, evacuate. He was wording this, in my opinion, quite careful, maybe because of that. So what was the verdict in this case? On October 22nd in 2012, the court found the defendants guilty and sentenced each to six years in prison, guys. So the verdict, of course, shocked the global scientific community, raising concerns about the criminalization of scientific judgment and the potential chilling effect on scientific advice in risk assessment, right? So now the scientists, they have to find a middle way between like not giving too much warning, but not giving too little warning. So is that where they saying, oh yeah, 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 we have to have evacuation plans in place for seismic activity, seismic activity. So is that why they're not daring to say volcanic activity? But if it then erupts, they'll be on the hook because they didn't say it. It's hard to tell, but I think there is definitely something going on. So there was an appeal. This verdict was appealed and in November 2014, an appeals court overturned the convictions for all but one defendant, Bernardo de Bernardinis. He was a former government official who only had his sentence reduced to two years. So the court acknowledged the complexity of predicting earthquakes and recognized that the scientists had not been negligent. So it's good that this has happened, but that was two years later. And of course, you know, some 300 people died, which is horrible, absolutely horrible. I don't wanna play that down, but let's imagine over 3 million people start running out of Naples and panic, there'll be more fatalities than 300. So that's why even if it was appealed, I still think it muzzles the scientists. That case after that, or even while it was going on, has stirred significant debate and concern among scientists worldwide. And many feared that the threat of legal repercussions could deter experts from providing honest and candid risks assessments in the future. So scientific organizations have argued that the trial conflated the unpredictability of natural disasters with criminal negligence. So potentially undermining the role of scientific expertise in public safety. You know, this earthquake at L'Aquila, it underscores the challenges of communicating scientific uncertainty and the risks involved in natural disaster prediction. So this case highlighted the need for clear communication between scientists and the public, as well as the importance of managing expectations regarding the limits of scientific knowledge. So while the acquittal of most defendants was a relief to the scientific community for sure, um, this case is still in the back of the heads of many scientists and the, of the stakes that are involved in disaster risk prediction and communication. So this is difficult, right? Because you could have some end of days, doomsday, nutcase scientists that are saying, oh, we're all doomed, it's going to blow up. And then, you know, should everyone react to that? There's other ones that play it down, maybe because of incompetence, or maybe they really think that. But as I just said, that science, it can go all the way. There's if you ask 10 different scientists, you'll probably have at least five to eight different opinions. Look at what's happening in Iceland right now. We have the 
one guy from the University of Iceland, he's saying, I think all the eruptions will end in summer. There are signs that this will die off. The official Icelandic Meteorological Office that officially gives out all the data and warnings, like the INGV, says, no, it's preparing for the next eruption. We will see another one. So, and there's the people of the town of Grindavik that had been evacuated because of this. So when they heard what the University of Iceland was saying, they thought, okay, great, maybe we can move back into our town and bring it back to life. Maybe the town has a chance. But then on the other hand, the Met Office says, no, 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 this will continue. Your town will continue to be under threat from earthquakes um, and lava flows and eruptions, sinkholes opening, cracks forming and stuff like this. So there you see, these are seasoned experts that have a not, lot of knowledge, but like I said, the science in earthquake prediction and volcanic eruption predictions is not good, let's say it that way. And Campi Fligri is not erupting on a regular base, so you can't use past data to say, every time it erupted, it gave that much warning time and this and this and this happened. Like with the eruptions in Iceland that started on November 10th, there was an eruption almost every month. So they knew, ah, we measure the land rise, it has to be this and that, then we can think the next eruption is going to happen within a week. But then even then they were sometimes off a few weeks, right? So that is the critical problem that they're dealing with here in Campi Flegri. And I'll keep you updated about this because there's way more interesting stuff. I just don't want to put this all into one video. So guys, I have Rudy stand here on the table with me. And if you like this video and if you want to see my co-host again and if you want to see me again, please subscribe and do us a favor, like this video guys, give it a thumbs up so that it's pushed out by the algorithm and that more people can see Rudy and can see me and can learn about all these volcanoes and all the stuff that's going on on Earth right now. So thanks guys for your support and uh, I hope to see you very, very soon. Check out my videos in the end screen. It's an interesting topic about everything that's going on. If you want to see how the Stromboli and Etna eruptions are looking, spectacular pictures. I put the videos in the end screen right here, guys. Have a great afternoon, morning, night, wherever you are. Stay cool. Have a coffee. I'm having one here and I hope to see you very, very soon. Woody, you want to say bye-bye? <laughs> Say bye bye guys bye bye guys check out the videos here so we're filming this so that you can see the videos in the end screen and that you can still see Rudy who's advising you to watch these videos so that's it guys bye bye <laughs>